Hey, everybody, I'm Ed. And I'm Barb. And, and we're, we're the, the Streeters. Welcome to the RDRV Q&A tonight, where we attempt to answer your questions about stained glass. And other questions about glass in general. So we'll be happy to ask, answer your questions. It's a beautiful Monday here in South Carolina. We had some rain this morning and everything has moved out. Now we have beautiful clear skies and 95 degrees outside. We hope your weather is fine and you're having a good day. Um, just put your questions in the comments and we'll be happy to answer. Um, so we have two people. I don't see any comments yet, but just put them in the comments. Whoops. And we'll be happy to answer. Yeah. Some people are on Facebook. Just say hello. We'll try to uh, answer your questions as well. I'm not sure how they show up, but we'll check in Facebook yeah, and see it, if we can. At one time, do that. we had a 10 minute lag on the Facebook, but now. The, in the last couple lives, Barbara, we realized we didn't have a lag time. So I don't know Thomas, what's going on. Thomas is here. CM is here. Good to see everyone. Hi. Thanks for tuning in tonight, everybody. Yeah, we've um, got a lot going on in the studios. I hope you all are busy as well. Um, and if you have any questions, just put them in the chat. Deborah's here. Hi, Deborah. So, hey, so it seems like uh, seems, Anna A is here. Seems like people are uh, talking about doing festivals again this fall. So uh, we we signed up for our first festival in several years uh, today, as a matter of fact, and that's in October. So <clears throat> yeah. So uh, if you guys have uh, festivals going on and you're looking for, or you're looking for people for a festival, you can just put that in the chat as well. Yeah, or, or if you're going to be somewhere. Us, yeah, yeah, tell us where you're going to be, what state, where at. Maybe some of us can come see you if you're close by. Um, hi, Patricia. Good to see you. Good to see you're here. Hey, it's so good we'll to see wait everybody. just a few minutes and then we'll uh, start answering questions. We want to talk about the poll that we put on the uh, community page last week. Uh, and we want to thank you all for participating. Yeah, thank you guys for participating. I, we had I a good can't turnout. remember how many answers we had. I think it was 30, 36 or 40, something like that. Um, but we'll talk about that and... Uh, any other questions you might have, we'll be happy to answer. Mimi's here. Julie's here. Kim's here. Christine is here. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Okay. Well, let's. So, uh, we need uh, some questions, and we have a we have a glass chat tonight, Barb. Or... Yeah, we have a glass chat, and uh, I'll let you uh, answer the questions when we get them. You didn't get the poll. It went out on the community page. Um, it went, I believe it was last week. I'm not sure how y'all get that. It didn't go out on the membership page, just on the total public community page. Um, and it was a question. You can actually go to that community page and answer it right now. Yeah, because we haven't, you know, we haven't finished out the, but we did have quite a few of you, um, you know, respond to the question. And of course, you know, it's a question you could probably just look up on the Internet. But we were we were hoping that y'all wouldn't go that route and maybe take a, a gander at it and know it already. Uh, Larry Mary is here. And uh, hi, Larry. OK, so it's good to have everybody tonight. Thank you for tuning in. So uh, the question was, do you know the melting temperature of 50 50 solder? So we had 76% of y'all got it right. The, um, the answers were 361 to 420 Fahrenheit, 360 to 420 Celsius, question mark, 700 degrees Fahrenheit, question mark, 182 to 215 Celsius, question mark. So those were the options that you had to answer. Yeah. So the, the 182 to 215 in the Celsius range is correct. Your 361 to 421 in the Fahrenheit range is correct. The first thing that melts in your solder, everyone, is your tin. Your tin melts first, and then your lead uh, needs a little bit more temperature to, uh, to melt it. But keep in mind, you're not trying to melt your lead. What you want to do, that's why I keep, 
uh, I, I ask y'all to, if you're not using a rheostat or if you have one in your iron, that's fine. That classifies as a rheostat. If you don't have a rheostat on your iron and you're using a seven or 800 degree tip, this right here tells you, you need 361 degrees to 421 degrees in order to make everything melt. And somewhere in that middle, depending on the humidity and the air moving in your studio, you're going to find that perfect temperature that will work for you as, a, as to how fast you're working and whether your iron's cooling off too much or, you know, too little or what have you. So, you know, the best thing to do is keep in mind that the 10 melts first, the 361, 62, 63 degrees, and then the 421 is where your lead's going to start just disappearing onto your table. So if you're using an iron with a 700 degree tip, Get a that's the maximum amount that tip is going to give you. Even with the some of the 80 watt soldering irons, the maximum tip might be 800 degrees. That's too hot. You're going to want to dial that back to a perfect working temperature that works in your studio. Right. Right. Cause everybody's, you know, everybody's studio is different. Like right now, if we were working in here, we've got the air conditioner running. I got a breeze blowing across my shoulder. So I would have to adjust everything that I need to make my solder and work for me in this atmosphere. So just again, it's always adjustable depending on whether it's winter outside, it's summer, humid, raining, you know, all those things come into effect. And we want to thank y'all for, uh, you know, playing along with us and answering that question and getting most of you, 76% of you got it right. And that was yeah, really good. Yeah, we had a few people say that <clears throat> it was 361 to 420 Celsius, but that would be about 700, 800 degrees yeah, Fahrenheit, Celsius way is, too hot. Yeah, felt, right. So I think... I think what they did there, Bar, was they just meant to say Fahrenheit because that's the, you know. Yeah, a lot of people right. get confused about Celsius and Fahrenheit. But um, if you ever have a question, just, you know, ask us. We'll be or happy jot to it down and we'll be happy to answer. Or get yeah. it to us before 6 p.m. on Sunday evening prior to the following Monday's live stream. And we'll be happy to get it on for you if, if at all possible. So. Anna A is here and she says she's at the beginning of her stained glass journey. Um, and she's uh, learning a lot from us. Oh, um, Anna, thank you very much. Thank That's you. a very kind word. Kim Marie is here. And um, Mimi is here. Someone said um, they have COVID. Mimi. Oh, no. No. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm I hope sorry you to get, hear that, huh? Yeah. I hope you get well very, very soon. Hopefully you'll have a very speedy recovery, Mimi. Um, Joan is here from Ohio. Hi, Joan. Okay. Well, Mimi, I know everybody in our little glass community Rochelle here. Rochelle Otterice is, is here too. So I'm trying to say hello to everyone that has come on. Julie Bison. Good to see you again. Sarah Sophia, hello. Hey, everybody. Hi, everyone. Wow, Good we have a full community tonight. We do, we do. So That's pop great. that question in there. And so if you have any questions, come on and let us know. And we're going to, uh, and if you, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. And if you're out in, in the waitings, in the wings, behind the scenes, and just kind of checking things out, you can't ask a question unless you check in. And we would love to have your questions. So, again, this is Ahmed and this is Barb, and we're ready for some questions tonight. And I hope everybody's doing well. Mimi, speedy recovery. Yes. Yes. Um, I know several people that have had COVID, uh, found out they had COVID over the past couple of weeks. So, all of yeah. you all out there. Um, stay safe. Hope, stay safe, and I hope you yeah. feel better real soon. The numbers here in South Carolina have went back to wearing masks uh, in public places and in schools. Our numbers are really high, and uh, you know that's again I, we're definitely not out of the woods on this thing. But uh, so, but, how is our sound? Just a sound check. How is our sound? Is our sound one okay two. tonight? How are we doing? Um, if not, just let us know. You know, I ran off all these questions from the uh, from the comments in the YouTube, 
and uh, I know you said that they didn't print out right, but I didn't know that they you didn't really that they really didn't, didn't print, print out, out right. very well. Well, I tell you, Barb, a lot of them that I looked at were uh, were just a lot of really kind words about our channel and how much people learn and how they. Uh, how grateful they are how grateful they are to have us here which I is know. like that is just too much y'all are way too kind and we need and, those kind comments because every once in a while i get a comment like yeah go on like about your one, business like this one is <laughs> you really don't need music in the background in that video well, well i know that that was an early was a, video that was an early video i'm very sorry <laughs> i'll never do it again yeah that was a way early video because if y'all remember <laughs> We used to play background music in all of our videos, oh, and sometimes RDRV would be tramp trampling through the, the video as well. So okay. we've learned a lot since then. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find a question here. Um, yeah. I, oh, our sounds oh, great, everybody. Okay, so good. We're good. Sounds Thank great. you. Okay. Do you use tip tinning? Pam, do you mean... Um, the tip tinning that comes in a, a can. I I don't because I I use I use a rheostat with my iron and I don't have a problem with my tinning coming off my tip because I'm in control of my iron rather than you know and maybe you have a you know a, an iron that you use a rheostat on but for some reason if you're if your tinning is coming off your iron you're working way 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 too hot. It shouldn't come off. So of there. we use a little very damp sponge that we wipe our iron off. Between. And it and it's just if it's just like that's it. You don't need to boil the water on the sponge or burn a hole in the sponge cleaning it. It should just be a quick wipe, wipe. Let it sit for maybe fifteen or twenty seconds. A hundred watt iron will definitely recuperate that heat in that amount of time, and you should be ready to roll. I I work my rheostat on a 80 watt iron because I'm using right now in a, these projects I'm working on a real small lead so I'm using an 80 watt iron and I'm running my um, running my rheostat at about seven or seventy percent on an 80 watt iron and I'm working with lead so and I'm not melting the lead but I can do my one two pick straight up and I have a beautiful solder joint so what that tells me is I'm melting my solder. I'm about 365 degrees, but I'm not melting my lead. So I'm going to guess my iron is probably right at about 400 degrees. That's very comfortable for me. I can work fast or yeah, does slow. Does it cool down as you're working? Though? It does. And the, the wattage in your iron determines how fast that your iron can recuperate right. the heat. Okay. So uh, again, I'm using an 80 watt iron on some small lead windows mm -hmm. and it can recuperate that heat enough for me to do that. If I'm working on a larger window, larger pieces of lead coming into each other, sometimes three on a face, some, maybe even four on a face, I'm going to use a three eighths chisel tip bar, but I'm also going to use a hundred watt iron sure. because I want, once I go, you know, your, your flux cools the iron a little bit, but before you start soldering tsh, tsh, with the sponge or a damp paper towel, 15 seconds, one, two, straight up, one, two, straight up. You should be able to do 15, 10 or 15 solder joints before you should need to set your iron down, give it a minute or two, clean the tip again real quick and get back to work. Right. I'm sorry. I did. I, I hope <laughs> I didn't bore y'all with that. And we have a but, video I mean, that's on the, that. That's the, that's the, that's the, you know, that's a working mechanism of the soldering iron. 80 watts will will cool down and take a little longer to recuperate the heat. 100 watts will cool down, but recuperate that heat within in 30 seconds, 40 seconds, uh, so that you can work faster. So. Uh, we put a new playlist up on the YouTube channel. So it, when you go to the YouTube channel, it'll say stained glass school. If you scroll down a little bit, It'll have our different playlists. It'll say stained glass school. That Those videos are our most popular videos, and they'll take you through stained glass, soldering, all that. Foiling, grinding. I, I believe think all that, of that right? first video may have the soldering in it, but the video that's there 
it might be the last i don't know but the video the, i think there's only a few there like five the video that's there that says how we make stained glass shows how ed does his solder My one two up straight up right so if you're interested in looking at that and if yeah because it's a simple way to it's a real simple efficient way to solder lead okay and then i also teach what i call my touch and go for copper foil if you're just learning how to solder copper foil don't think you can run a bead from point a to point b uh, and make it look nice so if you'll use my touch and go system it's going to teach you eventually then you will yes you will you'll be running beads like nobody's business and you'll be proud of those beads but use the touch and go to get started so that now you're proud of those beads and don't become discouraged julie would like to know if uh, she were going to make stained glass shutters for windows roughly 30 inches wide by 36 inches tall what would you recommend for the hinge mechanism framed in wood I would frame them in. Yeah, I was going to say, Julie, what you're going to need to do, and and I and I recently found this out because I just ordered some framing material. That the framing material at Franklin, they also have a one inch wide oak board, which is perfect for your shutters. So if you're going to do a hinge, you're going to want to get a uh, what are called a pin hinge, and it's just a hinge that slides over top of itself. And hold, the weight of the shutter coming down holds it on the two pins. Is it and a then continuous they'll swing. hinge? No, it's not a oh, continuous okay. hinge. It's just a, it's actually a pin design, oh, a hinge for a shutter or even a swinging door like in a bathroom or something. And that's Franklin? And Franklin has the wood, but your hardware store is going to have the hinge, yes. Okay. But Franklin's got Boy, that, that wood. Nice. It's yes. so beautiful. And I can only imagine what a... Uh, what a set of shutters in a bathroom would be so elegant, you know? So um, I would suggest to, unless you're really good at math, I would suggest building the shutter itself to the size of the window and build that shutter, make sure it fits and closes, and then take your measurements for your stained glass. Yeah, because you're going to build your shutter. If, you're, if your windows, if you've got 30 inches in the daylight opening, what we call the daylight opening, then each one of your shutters is going to be 14 and three quarters because you're going to need an eighth all the way around on the sides. And then you're going to need at least three sixteenths in the center that so that they'll close, close and open. And then you they want them to room. open. And if they're in a bathroom, you want to give them a little they bit more play than that because of uh, expansion and contraction from the dampness and the moisture within. I don't the bathroom. know that they're in the bathroom, but okay, <laughs> he's just guessing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if I was building shutters, they'd be in the bathroom. It sounds nice, yeah. <laughs> it does good sound idea. good, but I would use that smaller wood. Then you don't have to worry about anything happening to that. Once you glue it and screw it, you're good to go, and then put some hinges on it and let it rock. That's right. And put some really nice glass pulls on it. Maybe even make them in your kiln. Yeah, I don't really know any other way to make something that's going to hold up. Well, just putting a, putting a stained glass in zinc and trying to mount a frame on it, just normal wear and tear once or twice opening and closing, it's on the floor. Please build a wooden frame around it and make it, you know, either paint it or stain it, but use the correct hinges, glue and screw the wood. Remember, everything's hanging down. So you want your screws to go in from the side, not from the top or the bottom. So you want to get all that right and then put some hinges on it and also, you know, make some nice pulls for your, uh, for your door. Uh, because it's 30 inches wide, I wouldn't do just one door. You're going to need to split it to make it look right and, you know, to make oh, it I'm stay sure together. She's yeah. put a, a pair of doors. Yeah. I think that's what she said. Shutters or windows. Shutters for windows. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's Sounds right. nice. Let us know. Send yeah. us photos. <laughs> yeah. The other thing you can do is if you can find some old shutters, you can take the slats out and you can. You can uh, take them apart, glue them, and screw them together so that they're rigid, and then use that old wood and make your glass for uh, inside where the slats used to be on the old shutter. It's kind of like that old shutter we have in the bathroom down the hall, Bart. It's kind of neat looking. Yeah. And it's Cat St. Jane is here. Hey, how are you? 
Good to see you all. I'm glad everybody tuned in tonight. Thank you so much. Our our family is growing. We we just surpassed 6,211 subscribers. So Melanie's thank you. Melanie's here. Hi, Mel. I was thinking about you today. You must have telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> How's your stained glass coming? But uh, yeah, I was thinking about you today. Okay, Julie says, um, uh, thank you so very much. They are the living room, but now you got me thinking about the bathroom as well. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make work <laughs> for you. <laughs> continue. Well, that's good, though. The living room is fine, you're too. You're not late. You know. Yeah, you're yeah. not too late. Yeah. Um, so we were just really answering a few questions and talking a little bit about um, doing shutters for for windows yeah, and, and, and framing uh, them up in wood so that they can, they'll last forever. You know? So if you have any more questions, you can put them in the chat. Uh, Ed's got a uh, glass. Just a, yeah. Pretty piece of glass to show us, share with everyone tonight. And uh, so what is everyone working on? We had a question we were going to ask tonight and what was it, Ed? What did we want to ask them? You know, Barb, wow, it happens to us all the time. <laughs> have you ever made glass tiles for a pool? Melanie wants to know. I have not. However, uh, they can be made. What you want to use is uh, it'll end up being a quarter of an inch thick, two pieces of eighth inch tile of eighth inch glass. Uh, they can be painted on the outside because the chlorine won't bother them. Uh, you know, four by four, six by six yeah. tiles. You can make them. And one thing about that, if they're because you're making tiles, is you can, depending on your kiln, Mel, you can you can fire, you know, you can fire 50, 75 of them at a time. So uh, I used to, back in my teenage days, I used to build swimming pools. And that was my, actually, that was my job, was putting the tile around what they call the beam on the swimming pool. So. Um, but yeah, you can make tiles in the kiln and you can make them as thick as uh, three eighths if you want, which is 10 millimeter, but it'll be three pieces of eighth inch glass. Yeah. You'll have to just fire them enough to, you know, roll those edges. That's really all you want to do is roll the edges. Get them to that perfect temperature to where you don't have to do any grinding or anything. Yeah, just that's true. So, and edges. keep in mind, if you want to add some copper into it, Sheet copper is the same coefficient as glass when it's cooling or heating up. So thin sheet copper mill. Okay, Christine is, strugg is struggling to come up with a design um, for her cabinet doors that are side by side. Three cabinet doors that are side by side. Southwestern ideas. So, anybody in the crew here have any yeah, ideas? Yeah, you know, for Southwestern, Christine? you got the you got the red desert, the rocks, the red rocks out there. But if you're not going to want to use red or burnt orange in your kitchen unless you really uh, got it in there, and you may have it in your tile like a terracotta color. Or something. So, Southwestern design, I think of uh, blanket designs, um, a little bit more. Um, prairie designs, which are kind of like Frank yeah. Lloyd Wright designs, yeah, but just like, like little upside Aztec. down arrows, yeah. Um, uh, something Aztec y, Aztec y, Aztec -y, not in, not in te 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 technical tech -y, but as in straight lines, mission style, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. cactus. Cattle skulls, orange, yellows, teals, and reds. Yes. Yeah. Now, because see, I was thinking, I didn't know if you wanted to go that route, but I was myself, I was leaning towards a cattle skull uh, in one side of the door, a cactus on the other, and then a little bit of uh, maybe a vulture flying up in the background somewhere. So uh, I think For some red got rocks. <laughs> a ton of ideas on that. Okay. Um, Can't wait to see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, Melanie said she's thinking about kiln carving some of the feature tiles for the pool. So are you, are you thinking about doing it around the edge of the pool? That's that's uh, sounds beautiful. Uh, it does sound beautiful. And, and, you know, you typically you would just make your regular pattern out of paper and then kiln and then carve your tiles. Uh, and then, of course, you know, fuse them and roll the edges on them. 
Sounds nice. And you should be able you there's there's no reason why you can't use a uh, because you're going to be gluing them, Mel, you probably don't want to use a paper on the bottom of your kiln. You want that texture from the bottom of your kiln to help the tile cement stick. So you yeah, don't want perfectly rough, slick tiles. Yeah. Not on the back. Not on the back. You don't want perfectly slick tiles on the back. Thomas Sharp is here. Hey, Thomas. I'm glad you tuned in tonight. I hope you're doing well. Okay, we're not we're we're gonna do a um viewer showcase next week, y'all. So if you have any pic, uh, pictures you want to send in, just go Please to the RDRV, go to conwayglass.com, RDRV. Send You'll Barb see, a message. Send me a message. Just click on that box. And we'll get you that link and we'll get you started on sending those pictures. Now, remember, we love to showcase your work, but it has to be to us before next Sunday at 6 p.m. Okay. Sunday at 6 p.m. is a cutoff. Uh, if it comes in the, you know, later than that, we're just going to put it, we'll put it on the next viewer showcase. But we don't have a viewer showcase every week. No, we don't. That's what I mean. So yeah. it's like every other, it's every, every other, other week. week. So if you send it in last week, it's going to come up. Um, It's coming up, but it hasn't come up yet. Well, we want you to, yeah, because we want to showcase your work. So yes. please send I think it I have us. two, two people that have sent in their work and, and they'll be on next week's and then whoever else sends in. We want to have, you know, a good amount of people. Okay. Do we have any questions? Well, any Mel, questions? yeah, I don't know. I was thinking about, you know, Mel talking about doing some carving. I was thinking about uh, making tiles using flashed glass. Wouldn't that be pretty? You could use a, you know, a coefficient, see either a 90 or a 96 flash glass and see if you could uh, do some crazy stuff in some tiles. Larry Mary said geometric designs kept coyote howling at the moon. Yeah, and you know what? The coyote is usually a silhouette, which is cool because you could actually incorporate some painting into the ca those cabinet doors and make that coyote a silhouette with the moon coming from behind him. So. Okay, so Mel, you, you've done the kiln carving before. That sounds really interesting. Um, and she's using alumina hydrate. Is that what you use? I use aluminum oxide. So uh, I don't know what for, to sandblast with. Uh, I'll have okay. to check out. I'll look up aluminum hydrate. Send some pics of the kiln carving. Thank you. I Please do. See Thank it. you, Mel. Because uh, a lot of people here probably don't even know know about it. And I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. We still Practice have like class. five techniques that we're waiting to try out that we learned while we were away at school last month. There's so much month. to learn, y'all. There's so much <laughs> to like, learn. It's like, holy cow. Oh, it's crazy. But uh, um, it, if you guys have ever been to our website, uh, we've made some big improvements. You, uh, you'll be able to navigate our website a lot easier if you go to conwayglass.com, RDRV. You'll go there. You'll see it's all cleaned up. No more a bunch of stuff. If you want to go shop for our tools and books and all that kind of stuff, just click on that little link there that says tools and books and stuff. And it'll take you to it. And it'll take you right to our, we can have an Amazon store. We qualified for an Amazon store because we're considered to be a micro influencer now. Can you believe that? Yeah. So, <laughs> and we like micro greens. <laughs> so uh, we had a big step forward and we got to um, get a, uh, yeah, so Amazon check out store. our check out our Amazon store. Uh, also, we also uh, Barb got our Etsy page. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> our eBay page all set up now, and we're doing Facebook uh, we're Facebook doing marketplace. Facebook marketplace, and on those two pages are uh, items that can be shipped. And it's it's our um, mid century modern collection of mid century modern glass, y'all. So. Um, those are all uh, on our eBay page. Thomas, I didn't see the two bottle of uh, Ruby Flux. So, uh, in fact, the Ruby Flux, and it is in that um, link. If you go to RDR, go seen to the that two link. Bottle. I haven't seen the two bottle, and I noticed that the one bottle, I think it's $12. It's gone up. Yeah. So it's gone up. 
So I try everything that's in that uh, Amazon store. I shopped around for the best prices I could find because patina has gone up. I didn't even bother putting solder on there because you guys have your favorite solder and uh, yeah. I have, I have mine and I don't buy it from Amazon and uh, the good solder is out of sight. $30 a pound. Well, retail on it's 31 and some change and it, you yeah. know, it's just, and by the time you, and it, there's a reason for it. I mean, I know that, that it's gone up, but when we, when we have 50 pounds shipped in Barb, the freight on it's over a hundred dollars. So, I mean, it's right. So that's, that's costing us over a dollar a roll. That's right. To ship. So, I mean, I, well, I don't know what else to do because if you buy less than that, the shipping is going to eat you up. And now all of a sudden you don't have any room to try and make a little bit of money. So what are you talking about now? Solder. Oh, solder. Yeah. yeah. If you, you can find it to... local, it would be good. Yeah. Well, the, the plumbing companies don't have it anymore. Uh, they just sell the 95.5. But if you could find a plumbing local company that may. A local stained glass retailer. Yeah, local stained glass retailer. I mean, we have, I don't know what well, we have, about 10 or 12 rolls in inventory right now that we keep all the time. So You do? Uh, it's in my office. Well, how are you going to sell it if it's in your office? <laughs> well, I didn't know people Is that for sale? It. Yeah, how much it is can it? be sold. But it, okay, it's, but it's, then the shipping. So, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, you're I better off things match like the that. price on Amazon. I we don't can't think touch we can it. match it. Because but we can't do free shipping to, on that stuff. Yeah. Back to our uh, Amazon store. If you're a Prime member, you'll get free shipping. And we don't have a whole lot of items. We picked our top three uh, three soldering irons in our rheostat. We picked our top uh, three glass grinders cutters. and our top grind. You know, just the top tools that we use. I haven't put hand tools on there yet. But there's a lot of things like paper and some of our uh, yeah, wish all, items. Our drawing ourselves. tools are there, you know, our, our pencils that we use to draw, our paper that we use to draw. It's all right there. And these are all things that we use all the time and, and we use a lot of them. So. And there's a new grinder there that y'all are going to love, but I'm not going to talk too much about it yet. No, nope. <laughs> not till we talk to the company that makes it. So um, we're, we hope to get one in here and give it a try. And so you guys will be the first to see it right here on the RDRV channel. Oh, I know what we were going to ask. So what? we were going to do the what what day for those of you that are members of the RDRV fan club. What Saturday would be good? I sent you all a message on that yeah, on the and, community uh, page. It should go to all the members. What day? And what did you want to talk about? Yeah, so look for that, guys. What's on your mind? You guys that are members and those of you that are thinking about being members, uh, we're going to do a member-only live stream, and you all are going to be have more input as to what the subject is and how focused we become on that uh Because that's that just a once-a-month thing on a Saturday, you know, so we want to make sure – that if we're going to do something that we do, you know, what people are wanting to talk about. And we want to thank you everybody for that great response to the worksheets that Barbara got together for you on how to price your work. What a great response everybody gave us. And I want to kudos to this one right okay, here. Okay. So you guys, that uh, offer for the free worksheets is over in uh, three days, three days. Three yeah, days, three Friday. Days. Yep. So grab that. It's free. And then it forever okay. disappears. Um, well, well, it's there. It's just four ninety nine. Well, the package is there that has the, the just, worksheets, the worksheets. Are no longer available. Yeah, you unless just you can't buy get the, the worksheets. Right. You got to get the package. Um, Melanie said she's glad we have a store on Amazon. Yes, it is like having an endorsement, and we're going to be doing videos too because uh, we tried to, and I haven't really fine tuned it, but we're trying to feature. Only products from the company that um, makes them. So if it's an inland grinder, we're featuring it from the inland Amazon store. So, you know, it's the same prices on the inland store. So uh, and the warranty, you know, it all follows back to the good warranties on these right. products. <laughs> and y'all make sure if you get a new grinder, it doesn't matter whose grinder you get. If you get a new grinder, of course, Inland and this other new grinder that's out there right now, 
they all really do a good job with their warranties, but only if you fill out the warranty card and get it to them. So make sure you do that. Um, you know, I, I, we probably have had to return one inland grinder in 36 years. <laughs> Thank you, Melanie. We appreciate you. <laughs> she joined she joined us. Thank Monday. you, Melanie. Appreciate it. We got, appreciate it. Melanie. Got the doctor going crazy behind us here. Yeah. And don't forget to give us your input. Now that went out. Uh, yeah. It went out to members. So if you go to the community page, you'll be able to see that membership post. You'll be able to see the member only post. I'm pretty sure. But if not, email me and I'll make sure you get it. Julie says she's having a problem downloading the pricing guide. Julie, when you download it, download it, and then you got to check out on the shopping cart, and it'll be zero, but you just have to check out, and then it'll send a download link to your email. Yeah, so it's not so like I, you're paying for it. You just have to go through the process. The um, If you ordered the uh, spreadsheet and... Uh, when we first put it out and you couldn't find the second page, I sent out another email giving you the correct link. Um, I redid the thing so it was easier. There were two pages there, but you couldn't find it. So I put everything on one page. Go to RDRV, go to ConwayGlass.com, RDRV, and you can go to, excuse me, Patterns and Tools, and you'll see the link. Download it. Download that one if you didn't get the new one. And that's all on one page. Oh, Julie, no, the doctor is not for somebody. That was an it's ad campaign. Sale. It's for sale, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's for sale. But it was an ad campaign for us. One of the largest ad campaigns and most profitable ad campaigns we had back in the uh, in the early, in the 80s. And it really did good. Uh, but Can the doctor's here. He's for sale. He's getting framed this week, too. So. Kim, if you can't get that spreadsheet, go, like I said, to the RDRV page and go to the tools and patterns and it's there and you can download. If you can't, send me a message and I'll get back in touch with you. You can send me a message right from the website. Okay. And that's, <laughs> that's Julie Graves. Okay. That's Ju <laughs> Julie Bison. I'm sorry. And, um, Julie has, um, has her. Yeah, yes. I'll have to go get the framing. But the framing we use is is uh, we get it from Franklin Art Glass and uh, up in Ohio, and it has the rib down the middle of it. I don't have a piece of it here, but I'll go get a piece. Uh, yeah. You'll have um, to excuse Pauline, me. Pauline uh, has a question about installing windows. I think I can answer this. Okay, go ahead. Um, and if I don't answer it good enough, we'll have Ed answer it. Uh, she wants to know how those windows um installing windows but how about those windows you don't install and just hang will the prices be different and by how much so yes the prices will be different because if you're not installing the window then you don't have the time the price will be different based on the amount of time and materials that you put into your product so if you're not installing it you may have to put a wood frame, um, and uh, so that would add back in. So, <coughs> excuse me, if you do that spreadsheet, you can figure it out both ways. That worksheet will help you figure it out both ways. So you take out the frame and add in the other installation, but then you got drive time. So, yeah, it will be different. Does that answer it? Hey, everybody. <laughs> Does that answer what would you do? Yeah, that was a good answer, Barb, because, you know, your your framing material, okay, is uh, with you cutting the wood, putting the, you know, miter in it. Put, do you want me to put the other it, camera up? Would and that screwing be easier? it and everything. The, your framing material is uh, $12 of linear foot. Do you want me to put the... Yeah, put it on camera too, Barb. Okay, Mel, this is what we... This is what we use right here. I'm going to hold it still and let the camera focus. There we go. So from here to here is an inch and three eighths, top to bottom. It's an inch and it's an inch and three eighths wide. It's 
three quarters wide this way and this groove now they have a they have this wood now they have this wood is available for uh, copper foil around the outside or lead or zinc you can put zinc in this too but I recommend that you're going to frame you should frame everything uh, and this wood is already finished it's not it's already been sanded it's not sharp it's really a beautiful product uh, and if you if you order you know you probably have to order 15 or 20 lengths of it to get a really good price on it uh, which is what we do. We order, we usually order a lot of it because you got to pay the freight. So order as much as you can, keep it in the box, keep it flat, and you don't have to worry about it warping. So again, this is my oak wood that I get uh, by the six foot length from Franklin Art Glass. Okay, question. Can you use that outside? I would say the answer to that would be yes. You would just have to finish it. Uh, I would, what I would do is I wouldn't put a polyurethane on it. I think I would put a, a marine oil on it for exterior and put it outside. So I don't think you'll have a problem with it. What kind of wood is it? It's again? oak. It's oak. red oak. You should be good. It needs protection yeah, from and the it, weather and may need protection, you know. Yeah. And, but if you're going to. If you're if you're talking about that project that you're working on, Mel, the, probably the best thing to be in the uh, California, San Francisco area is going to be redwood uh, because the bugs don't like it, nor does the weather. Uh, it, weather doesn't affect it. So it, it tends to move quite a bit and doesn't separate. It's um, it's really a, a nice wood to work with within the humidity, humid and moist areas. So. Uh, Kim Marie wanted to know, uh, does a cane edge fit in that channel? Yes, it does. A cane edge will fit in this. Um, and then they also make a, a channel that's smaller that you can, that will hold a, just a, you know, copper foiled edge piece of glass, which I don't recommend ever doing that. But You would want to put your copper foil window into a lead frame and then put and it And then put the lead around this. But make sure you tack solder. It's just a better way it's of just framing. A better way, yeah. Gives it more structural Rigidity. Yeah. foundation and flexibility. It's it's a softer if feel and not rigid like uh Right. Well, Mel, Mel says she brought red she bought redwood and we had talked about redwood Oh, months ago, Mel, when you started this project, and I, I felt really comfortable uh, recommending the redwood because of the area that you're using this window in. So, yes. Okay. Do we have any other questions? If you don't treat the oak trim, the oak will turn black because of the weather. True. Right. Yes. It'll turn gray, and then it'll turn black. It sure will. <laughs> it sure will. So, yeah, you would want to treat it. You can uh, treat it with a tongue oil. You can treat it with a, you know, clear, any, clear a, finish. Yeah. If you use, you don't want to use a, a, a like an oil based polyurethane. You want to use a water base. If you use a water base, then you don't have to worry about the, the wood drying out so bad that it actually just pulls apart. Okay. Let's see. I don't see any questions. Uh, Julie says she can't wait to see the video on framing. We have a video on framing, but Ed said something about he wanted to We're redo it. We're going to frame this one. So. Oh, you're going to frame that one. Okay. We're going to frame the doctor. So I'll show yeah, everybody how to do that. And you know, that might that. be a good video to show how we frame it and how we hang it for the customer. You know, so Yeah, because the doctor is for sale and um, I have a sneaky We'll find feeling. a place to hang him. Yeah, we'll find a place to hang him until he till he leaves the office. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to get things fixed up to open up the gallery in September and, and the, the stained, stained glass, glass retail. retail. Oh, September, September the 15th. 15th. Yes. I'm writing a blog post on it. That'll be going out um, mid August. We have lots of glass coming in mid August. And then I'll have links to all of our stuff going so on. So we'll be getting all that unpacked and, and put up and, and, uh, you know, we kind of, we pretty much know there, there's certain things that everybody uses all the time. And then there's things in the stained glass that 
you only need to buy every now and then. And then there's things you really only need to, should have to buy once. What are we talking about? Tools and things like that, you okay. know, for the stained glass okay. retail. So, yeah. So uh, Melanie has a question. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read questions with this ear and, and listen to him with the other ear. It's not that I'm ignoring you, honey. Oh, don't worry. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. There was a question that does marine grade urethane work on teak? I believe it does. Yes. But you know what, if you're going to most, most boats, teak boats, uh, depending on where it was, were either a lot of the teak was just oiled, but there is a, the, the, like, for instance, the boat that Barbara's grandfather used to have, that was teak. And, and he kept that, he took it out of the water every winter and redid the teak and he oiled it and polyurethane it. So Patricia, what, did, okay. I was talking about your grandfather's boat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Patricia wants to know, uh, do you glaze the lead on the frame before you frame it? Um, that little bit, no. What, what you need to do, though, is you do need to, wherever the solder joints. What's she talking about? If she's just going to wrap it around a piece of copper foil, and then she's going to need to tack solder it. But I don't think you need to putty it. Do you glaze the lead on the frame before you frame it? Oh, are we talking about um, copper foil work? If you're talking about just putting a piece of lead around the copper foil so that you can put it in the frame, no, but you do tack everywhere the solder joints meet the lead. You have to attach it that way, but you don't have to putty it. The, the frame is, the lead frame is just taking up this void right here and making sure that everything's rigid all the way around. But now if you have a leaded window, of course, of you, course, yeah, you, you do the whole thing. You do the whole thing before you put it in the frame. So most likely you'll put that uh, edge on there. And then solder, I mean, and then finish the whole thing. Right. Yeah. So you probably would. Um, yeah, if you want. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt it to putty it because all you're doing is cementing the lead to the outside edge of the glass. Right. So, but, but it definitely has to be soldered, you know, everywhere there's a joint up to it. And, uh, and then you want to make sure. Yes. Yeah. So Tom said marine grade works good on teak because that's what they use on boats. Yep. Yep. That's it. Yep. Okay. Yes. And around copper foil. Yes. So you wouldn't have to. Um, uh, putty. Hmm? Just solder it. You wouldn't have to putty. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Yes. You wouldn't have to putty around the copper no, foil. You wouldn't have to putty the, around the copper foil. It's just kind of a buffer, you know, and it. Makes it's, it fit, fit makes it nice. Fit, and keeps it from rattling. Mm, that's the big thing. You don't want that thing to rattle. Yeah, that all that rattling uh, that's just nonsense. <laughs> it's nonsense. It. You don't need any rattling going on. Okay. Ray's here. Hey, Ray. Hey, Ray. Good to hear from you. Yeah, man. It's nice that's to see right. you tonight. Better late than sorry. You can watch the rerun. We're good. We talked about the um, poll that we did. And the uh, Fahrenheit and the Celsius and what was what, and uh, seventy per six, seventy six percent of you got it right, and which was great. So, and a couple of you, the only thing you got mixed up was Celsius and Fahrenheit. So and that's right. a that's a and simple there were mistake. There a couple people that said seven hundred degrees. But yeah, I think that was just a guess. It, I think it was a guess, and that was a good guess because, well, it's it's still too hot to work. If you're working seven hundred degrees, you're working too hot, and then you're going to have you wonder why you have little black stuff all over your glass while you're trying to solder. It's because your copper foil is lifting off the glass because you just melted the glue at 700 degrees. Yes. So I hope everyone's had a, a, a nice vacation this summer. A lot of you have been away. A lot of you are just coming back from vacation. Um, yeah, we're so, happy to have you. Yeah, we're happy to have you. Um, did you have a... Uh, demo you wanted to do tonight, Ed? Well, I just have a piece of glass I'd like to share with everybody. And then if somebody's if somebody's having trouble cutting something or you're having trouble, you know, not getting a piece of glass out of a particular piece of glass or something, let me know. Uh, maybe I've got some window glass here on the table and maybe we can draw what you're talking about and we can go over how to maybe get it out and complete it for you. But first, Barb, 
I'm just going to share a piece of glass. If you'd switch to camera two for me, please. I'll do it. So I'm going to share this piece of glass. And this it is, is so, so very For the pretty. new project, right? This is for the new project. This is actually, uh, we have a couple of uh, what are called John boats. We have a couple of John boats in the project that are just kind of sitting up on the oyster bank. And uh, so these, this glass here, this is a Kokomo 61. You know, they've probably been making it for 300 years. but And that's a little exaggeration, but I'm sure this is one of the ones they've been making forever. But what I wanted to show you, of course, this is the front side. But what I want to show you is what's going to be the little John boat sitting up on the marsh. I want to show you the back of this. And tell me that doesn't look just like you could get some wood out of that. Yeah, I see the wood. You know? definitely. So we're going to be using these glasses that we've got for this project, both front and back, so that we can, you know, just really give this window or these windows, plural, these windows a lot of character and a lot of sassiness to them i hope so That's anyway awesome. remember y'all this is this is kokomo 61 k61 and i want you to see it because it is y'all it is a beautiful beautiful glass and just part of some of the glasses that we're using in the drunken jacks project okay yes it will make beautiful wood. That's what we're using. <clears throat> That's what okay. we're using it for is little John boats sitting up on the on the beach. And so I've got a I've just got my tools here, my little tools, nothing fancy. Just my tools. And my um my running pliers, my six and a half inch running pliers, my black sharpie a piece of eighth inch window pane glass. Oh, okay. And just, you know, so we can cut some glass. I want everybody, if you listen to your cutter, your cutter will tell you exactly what you're doing right or wrong. So what I found over the years is if you're cutting out a half moon like that, don't ever start with the outside because if you mess up the inside, if I'd have messed up the inside, all I have to do is take my pattern and move back and just keep moving back until, you know what, I get it right. So here we are again. I'm going to slide up here. I think Barb can see this. Camera two is working. We're just going to stay just inside that black line because that is my pattern. That's where I need to be. And I, I want you to know that um, this is a little bit too narrow to be using running pliers for a job your grouser should be doing. So we're going to... We pulled it down here. We ran our run to right here. I think you can see my finger right there, yeah, back okay. and forth. Uh -huh. I'm going to the other end of the farm here, everybody. I'm going to, I'm not going to grab it right on the end because that piece will break. I'm going to grab it about a half inch in and pull down. Now you see that it still didn't break out. I'm going to pull it down again. I'm going to lift down and then up. Ready? Boom. Awesome. And that comes right out. Because glass breaks at an angle, y'all, just like that. Every time you cut it, every time you pull down on the pliers, sometimes you have to not only pull down, but just pick up ever so slightly. If you can't get the glass to come out of the, the score that you just cut, try just, don't turn your pliers over, try pulling down just a little bit and then pick up ever so slightly, just like that, just ever so slightly. And what you're going to find is that edge right there and that little edge right there. And you can shoot. I don't know if you can see the refraction on that or not. There's a little nodule there. That, y'all, is what was holding the glass in here, okay? So keep in mind, when you're cutting glass, you can't just grab it and break it and Willie McNelly it. You can't do that. 
Yeah, all that Willie McNeely. Well, it's the Willie McNeely in that gets you, Barb. I know. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to show you something because you know what? Every night, every Monday night, we always have one or two people that are just starting in stained glass. Just starting in stained glass. And I want you to know that when you're cutting a straight line, people, you pull it. And yeah, it's okay to come off because I'm coming off on plywood. And then I want you to know that your running pliers are used especially for this reason. Just like that. Practice, 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 y'all, on your glass cutter. And then you'll be able to, once you, once you practice, you'll become more confident. And once you become confident, there's nothing that will stop you from fabricating and designing a window. What do you think, Barb? Um, yes. I'm just reading all the great comments we have here. Uh -oh. um, I'm getting rid of my racing them. Something. I don't know what I got going on here. Okay. Anyway, so keep in mind, y'all, even if you wanted to do something as crazy as, as this right there, it can be done. Okay. Okay. So it can be done, but it has to be done in a, in a way that, So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of this because I don't want that. Okay. So we're doing, what are we doing? We're chasing the run, everybody. Okay, so once we get to here, now we've got to come back and go here. <laughs> think that's working? Look at that. Okay. That's pretty good. It was rocking back and forth, y'all up here, but when I come down here and took it and pulled it up. So this should help you in some of your cutting endeavors. Okay. And uh, Ray was talking about how you could use the ball at the end of your cutter to tap it out. You can. To tap so out let's, your cut. Let's, let's tap out, Ray. Tap the back of it to uh, help the... Yeah. So you can take this ball here is for a very specific reason this. Do you see that? It's, it's already starting to run. Okay, now we're going to turn it over. Remember, Ed's always got his finger behind it. And back out, y'all. Okay, guys. That's another way that you can break the glass. Um, you can also, all right, and I'll just show you this because we're right on top of it. You can also take your finger like that and break it but you have to break it from behind okay and always remember guys and gals when you're breaking glass you pull down and away otherwise this little bit right there 
usually goes right there. You don't want that. You don't want that because uh, then Band-Aid brand has, you'll have stock in Band-Aid brand Band-Aid. <laughs> Do that. I hope cutting that just that little bit of window glass maybe gave you a little bit of a new technique. Ray's idea about tapping on the back of the glass. That was a, a something we learned years ago and we often forget about. We we do forget about it because yeah, it's just crazy. And uh so but I've found that over the years, a lot of times you have to you do have to use that ball just to, sometimes just to get it started, you know? And uh, so anyway, I hope that helped everybody out. <laughs> we always want to take just a few minutes and talk about cutting glass because it is one of the toughest things to do that in this industry. And if you can't cut glass, you sure can't move forward. Uh, Melanie said we need band-aids in our um, Amazon shop. I'm going to put a big jumbo, the best buy I can find on band-aids in the Amazon shop. Yeah, I'll put that under the cutting tools. Yeah, under the cut. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like they say, if you're not bleeding, everybody, you're, you're not, not working. working. So that's your. <laughs> no, that was actually my father's saying. That was our our. Uh, your father-in-law saying. My father-in-law's one of his favorite sayings. Yeah, and when he get cut, he'd say, "I sprung a leak." Yeah, I'm afraid I sprung a leak. I always had to worry about him though because he he took cumin in and I. I always, always told him, do not do anything in the shop at six o'clock in the morning that I may find you here alone, you know, that I don't want to find you. So, yeah. But, um, yeah. So, band aids in the shop. Yeah. We need, all, every shop needs band I'll tell you what, you need band aids. You should, this is what you need when you leave your house in the morning to go to your studio. You need, you need a pencil. You need a glass cutter, you need a pocket <laughs> knife, you need band-aids, and you need your safety glasses. Those five things, you're ready to work for the day, everybody. Yep. Shop towels. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> a bench brush. Oh, that I didn't put the bench brush in there. You definitely need a bench brush. Yeah, safety, 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 everybody. Duct tape. Yes. Do duct not tape. what I'll yeah. find the best and kerosene. Because if you get a cut, if you'll take a little bit of kerosene and put it on that cut, by tomorrow you're good to go. You'll never know it was there, That's I it. promise you. We've used duct tape in the shop for a lot of different things. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Karen. Oh, Karen, that's awful nice of you, hon. Thank you for the kind words. Yes. If any of you want one of the pendants we made for the uh, Oak Tree Project, they're not on the website, but you can send me a message and I'll send one to you. They're $25 and you can just send us a check and we'll send one to you. So they're kind of limited quantity, but we don't have them on the website. We have them here. We'll have them here in the gallery. Yeah. And you just tell us whether you'd like a textured one or a smooth one. And uh, I'll find you a bench brush, bench brush, Christine, and put it on the uh, Amazon. Yeah, the bench store. brushes are, are imperative, I think, for your for your studio. I don't know what they call them on, uh, or we may have some here. If we get some here, I'll put them on the website. Oh, okay. I okay. have to get them at a good enough price. It's hard to it's hard to compete with Amazon. You know, we'd like to have things here, but you know, if, if it's cheaper at Amazon, Frank, yeah. you know. Then that's where we have to go. We'd rather offer it to you on Amazon, and you're a, if you're a Prime <laughs> member, you get free shipping. So it's you know it's a win-win for everybody, really. So Thomas Sharp says if the duct tape don't work, don't stop the bleeding. It's time to go to the doctor. That's right. That's exactly you right. You can't close it up with duct tape. Go see the doctor. That's exactly right, Thomas. Oh yeah. my goodness. Okay, guys. Yeah, you don't want. <laughs> Are there any more questions? That's great. I love that. And sometimes I, I found out one time, Thomas, it was easier to get my belt off than to get the roll of duct tape out. Yeah, and go immediately. And, to and go immediate, immediately to the uh, emergency room. So hopefully none of us will ever have that experience. We don't need that ever again. Yeah, a little hand broom from the um, from the dollar store works great. Yeah, yeah I have one, a couple of those around here. Yeah, yeah, and you don't, you know, you don't want to use a whisk broom because that. Little it's too stiff. Broom. Little yeah. hand broom is great. Yeah, you need something soft that'll get little all those. Little hand broom like you would, you know, sweep up with. Has it comes with a little dustpan. They're about three dollars. 
Lisa's uh, here from Ohio. I think we have a couple people from hey, Ohio. Hey, good to have you. Tonight. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Oh, we just are uh, just getting some things done. We've, we've got our, our molding and uh, <clears throat> talked about glass cutting. Talked about some glass cutting and hopefully we, we've got a few things. And, and y'all, I don't mind, you know, next week if somebody wants to come up with something or uh, storage bins wants to see me uh, cut something that you're having trouble with. And I may have trouble with it too. You know, my day doesn't always go perfect either. But um, if there's a, a way to get something out, I can show you a, a, maybe a different, just s someone else's eye view looking at something a lot of times will help you. I know it helps me. But if there's something that you're having trouble cutting and I can help you get it cut or I can show you a technique to help you get that piece of glass out, I'll be happy to do that for you. Does anyone need to see anything tonight? Want to see any glass cutting before we leave? Anything you want to see? Because I think it is a little after eight. It's and good. Do we have any more questions? We'll be happy to stay we and answer. We sure are. Them. We'll be happy to. And we've already had our supper. So, oh, Julie wants to know how your hip is doing. Oh, my hip's doing great, Julie. And thank you for asking. He had no problems whatsoever. None. 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 Still, still uh, no problem. And we're up to. I call him Mr. Happy Hips. We're walking <laughs> six thousand steps a day now, so uh, that's going really well. And uh, yeah, so we're happy. He, he wants to happy take hips. off running every once in a while. I have to slow. Him I tried down. to race my granddaughter to the car, and she's like, "You know, Paul well, Bad, you can't run. You're not supposed to run. <laughs> you're not supposed to run." <laughs> That's the first thing Barbara told her when she got here. Bob Ed's going to want to race you, but he can't run yet, so don't. <laughs> yeah, he's tried a couple times and it's kind of set him back, so he needs to take it. Yeah, he needs to get not up allowed to, to 10, run 000, yet. Yeah. 10,000 steps and then you can start running. Yeah, once I get my 10,000 steps a day, uh, then I can start running. I'm really, I'm close to riding my bicycle though, Julie, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. Yeah, that'll be great. Because that, that way, that's just another thing that Barbara and I enjoy doing, which is riding our bikes. And uh, the last time he rode his bike, he fell. He fell on the on that hip. So we think that was the downhill. What you reading? It may have. It may have. May have been the thing that might have been the downhill on it. I don't know. We don't know. There were other things. There's a lot of things. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway. Uh, we've already had dinner, so we're happy to stay here a little yeah, bit longer. And the operation was a success, y'all. So thank you. And it was a life-changing yes. operation. Thank you for asking. Um, any more questions, y'all? Y'all have any questions or anything you want to share? Any projects you'd like to share? If you'd like to get in touch with us, I think y'all know how to do that. Go to Conway Glass RDRV and it hit the box where it says submit a question. There's several places. Yeah, on and the you're, or if, if you want to get in on the viewer showcase, you know, don't forget, send Barbara, you know, the information and she'll send you back the link so that <laughs> <clears throat> so that she can uh, get your viewer uh, showcase on. So keep in mind, everybody, if you're out there in the wings, just watching everything and listening to everybody chit chat, please subscribe to our channel. And don't forget when you subscribe, just above that subscription is a little bell. We want you to ring that subscription bell so that you're notified. Actually, it's a notification bell. It's we want you to ring the notification bell, bell so that you're right notified there. every time we come out with a live video or a live talk like it is every Monday night at 7 o'clock right here on the RDRV channel. Don't yeah. forget to subscribe, everybody. Hey, we hit 6,200 subscribers last night yeah that's and uh, amazing, so isn't it? thank you all for your help it's greatly appreciated it and is. thank you everybody for joining the rdrv fan club we appreciate it very much yeah thank you guys that have joined and uh, so um fill out that uh question i mean it's not a questionnaire it's just a questions two questions what time and what subjects you would like and put a variety of times so we'll get together I'll send you all some emails and we'll get together and figure it out because yeah. I want to make it convenient for everyone. Right. Because we have people, you know, we have people from the West Coast yes. that are members. And and we have, She's in California. Yeah. And we so so we want to make sure that we're when we come on and talk with everybody, we want to be here uh, so that everyone can be here with us. 
yeah, we want to make it um, convenient for everyone. And uh, we want everyone to have a chance to, you know, have their input into what's coming up and what we're doing. And we think that's a good way to get started. And I sure hope the worksheets have helped everybody out on the how to price your work. And if you'll do that, like we said in the video, if you'll do that for maybe four or five jobs, you'll kind of you'll get the hang of it. And you'll all of a sudden you you won't even need to look at that uh, paperwork to figure your jobs. But it's so much easier to have a worksheet to work off of when anytime you're figuring anything. Um, Thomas says there's no sense in running unless the cops are after you. Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. So if you go to Andrew, if you go to Anderson, South Carolina, might it might be it. after you. <laughs> Karen says she's got a big person tricycle. That's pretty cool. Oh yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Maybe we should get one of those. Well, Denver probably know. built that for. Her. Oh, I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, three person or a three wheel tricycle. That thing is pretty cool. Uh, Barb and I, believe it or not, y'all, Barb and I bought. Uh, what are called beat land cruisers or beach cruiser bikes um, 28 years ago. And we still have those bicycles. So uh, a matter of fact, before I had my hip operation, I put brand new tires on my bicycle. Great. You big still have your one. bicycle. I, I, have, I have a different bicycle. Yeah. Barbara has a different bicycle. I still have mine though. So. <laughs> oh gosh. Y'all are crazy. Okay. I think we're going to go. I'm starting to have a hot flash. Uh Oh, <laughs> Well, since we're having hot flashes, I think we're <laughs> out of here, everybody. These lights are hot and I'm getting hotter. That's right. So, hey, you know what? Thank you, community, for tuning in to the RDRV channel tonight. Sincerely, Hugs. I'm Ed. Y'all are a great crew. We love you. This is Barb. And we'll see you next week, if not sooner, on the RDRV channel. Don't forget, fill out that little two questionnaire questionnaire and get it back to us so we know uh, what y'all want and what we're doing. Thank you, guys. We love you. Thank you so much. And it doesn't want to end. That's okay. 